मधु हाय हाय मैं आदित्य मधु मैसेल आई एम वर्किंग ऑन एटीएल डेवलपर आई हैव अ टेन प्लस सीज एक्सपेंस ऑन एटीएल डेवलपर करेंटली वर्किंग ऑन सुपरफा मेन टेक्नोलॉजीज प्राइम प्राइमरी टेक्नोलॉजी डेटा स्टेज अराकिल टेरा डेटा यूनिक्स डीबी टू मेन फ्रेम आई वर्क मेन फ्रेम आल्सो या कोर इज अ डेटा स्टेज ओके या मल्टीपल डेटा बेसिस So I am working as a data engineer. Uh, I have an experience of uh, two and a half years, uh, but I am at the starting stages of the AWS project. So I was looking for uh, uh, beginning to the intermediate level, at least, like to uh, to accelerate my career in AWS. Thank you. Rohit. Uh, Rohit, can you unmute yourself and uh, uh, Srinu? Srinu, you can unmute yourself and uh, speak. Uh, Sritam? Hello. Hi, Tim. Uh, I'll go ahead. Yeah. My name is Ritam. I have two years of experience as a ETL tester in conferences. I'd like to know more about cloud data engineering. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Ritam, we can start. Um, thanks everyone for your introduction. It's really grateful to hear your voices. My name is Aditya. I am currently working as a, a senior data engineer. Um, I'm currently into machine learning as well. So I'm a ML engineer in my current role. Uh, I have nine years of experience into data engineering and machine learning. I work for a Fortune 100 organization. My experience predominantly lies around AWS Cloud Tech Stack, Python, data engineering, big data, data bricks, snowflake, airflow, so on and so forth. So that's that's like a basic intro about me. I'm really passionate about data, and I'm really passionate to make people aware of what the data engineering is all about. So that's my basic mission. Uh, I want to make as much data engineers as possible uh, in my uh, efforts. So that's a bit about me. I welcome you all to the first demo class of data engineering. I'll quickly share over my screen and we'll see what we have today in our agenda. Okay. Having said that, let me share my screen. Let me share it here. Okay. So if anyone can confirm that you are able to see the screen or not. Yeah, hi. It's visible. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for the confirmation. Okay. So this course that's that we we are here is about AWS Data Engineer, right? So let's try to dig deep. What is AWS Data Engineer means, right? And try to separate these terms out. So I'll first start with data, right? So we all know what data is. Anything that we do basically generates data in some shape or the form. If you go on social media, we generate a lot of data. We left out our digital footprint over there. If you shop online, we generate a lot of data. We left out our digital footprint over there as well. Our buying patterns, our buying habits over there. If we watch videos on YouTube as well, we are spreading a lot of data over there as well. If you post something on social media, you are generating that data, somebody is reacting to it. So everywhere you go, you perform a transaction. 
you will see data as well right so everywhere you go you will see data and data right so naturally organizations are really interested in understanding this data right why because data is the new gold for organizations because with the help of data they can generate a lot of hidden insights lot of hidden habits patterns about humans and what's the major goal is in order to do that so the major goal of organizations or company is to generate more profit and how they can generate more profit by selling their products services to the end customer right to make sure that my product is reaching to the end customer and it is going to be sell more i need to understand what my customer is what my customer end goal is right how my customer buy how my customer purchases so all of this pattern i can easily recognize with the help of data and that's why organization are really really crazy about how do we manipulate how do we handle how do we understand the data right back in 2011 12 the amount of data that we generate in one year guys today that same amount of data we produce in a single day itself so you can imagine the growth of data the paradigm shift that happens from last 10 12 years in the data space itself and hence you have heard that data engineer or data engineering is very popular it was not there 6 7 years back right if you were um studying or if you were you know already in the industry you you mean not be hearing this term this term itself generated from the last 5 or 6 year itself and now it's become really really popular and powerful why because everyone needs person and, and people and the person with the skill sets that can process this data right so that's it's that's data engineer right the if we combine the two words so a data engineer is a person who is responsible who can manage large scale data with ease so that industry can take meaningful decision and now the third term aws so to process large scale data we need cloud and there are a lot of cloud providers in the market aws is one of them and this course is designed on aws so that's a very basic of this aws data engineer as a term here right we will be going to discuss this in detail as we move along in the rest few more minutes okay let me move on to the next uh, slide okay as we mentioned earlier like what is data engineering right that i spoke about in terms of the business terms what is the importance of it now we will understand what is data engineering so data engineering is all about building pipelines building frameworks building infrastructure that can handle and process data right and we can store data and we can build reports out of our data by applying some data transformation that is basic data engineering is all about right just to give an example there is lot of data available out there right let's take an example of a retail company let's say walmart so walmart is producing lot of lot of data how they have 100 plus stores across us right if you don't know walmart is the largest retail chain in the world so over there millions of transactions happens every day right people go over there buy stuff and there is a transaction so that millions of transactions happens over there every day okay so i am a regional manager of walmart or let's imagine you know you are a business person from walmart who has power to take key decisions so if you have to understand okay from the last 6 month which is my most profitable product which is my best selling product which is my best selling store right how the temperature impact my sales how the price of petrol impact the sales if there is a holiday will my demand go up or will my demand go down if you want to understand all of these questions right you can easily understand by looking at your data but that data itself is very large like millions of records lying out there then how you will understand so in order to answer these question for your manager for the business person we need that data to be transformed in a state or in a fashion that these question can be answered right which means that somebody has to process one year worth of data to answer what is the best performing store for the last one year right 
So to do that, you, we need to build systems, we need to build pipelines that can perform this data operation and quickly give a single number. Okay, st store B is the best store. But to get this answer, we have to process terabytes of data, billions of records, right? So that's what we do as a data engineers, right? And that is about data engineering, right? And what are the key responsibilities of data engineers? They basically collect data from various sources, perform transformation, right? They build data pipelines, store it in data warehouse, generate reports out of it and share it back to the business so they so that they can take more informed decisions, right? Why it is important, right? We already discussed the importance of that. It helps us take better decisions for our business so that we can drive profitability in the business, right? So that's one of the importance of processing the data. So as a data engineer, what all challenges you can face on a day-to-day -day life, right? So that one of the biggest challenges, how you will process the large amount of data that is coming every day, right? How you will make sure there's proper security in place, right? How you gonna process data which is coming almost in real time, right? Because a lot of orders come from e-commerce website in real time. So how are you gonna analyze that data? So that all of are the challenges of data engineering that we deal with on day-to-day -day basis, right? What all tools data engineers use in their day-to-day -day basis? So definitely data storage, uh, programming language. Language can be Python, SQL, Java, C++, any language can work, right? Our course will be focused on SQL and Python. However, any language can work, there is no restriction, right? Apart from that, we need data processing. So processing this data, we need Spark for large scale data processing, data warehousing solutions, right? We need to automate this. All of these are basic tools used by data engineers in day-to-day -day life, right? And that we are going to cover in our course end-to-end, -end, right? That is a very brief of what is data engineering is all about. Okay. Now let's move on and understand that what exactly cloud is, right? Because we have introduced the term cloud in the beginning, right? And we mentioned that AWS is a cloud. So what exactly cloud is, right? So the picture that you see with red border is not a cloud that we are going to discuss in our session, right? So cloud is something that you see in the green border, right? It's, it's just a bunch of server or machines that is placed in a highly secured environment where humans or where end users cannot go directly, right? They are very secure. They are placed in a very tight, uh, uh, high-tech environment where our data can be kept securely without worry about data leaks, without worry about data hacks, without worry about any loss of information, right? So cloud is nothing. Again, I reiterate, but just a bunch of computers, machine placed in a very highly secure environment that you see here, right? Second thing is why we are discussing AWS, right? Why this course is built on top of AWS. We can choose any cloud, right? So if we have to understand the importance of AWS, we have to see this graph on the right-hand side, right? So this graph or this report basically published by Statista back in 2023. Statista is a leading market research platform which basically research identify the trends, what is happening in the market. So as per Statista, the market demand of AWS data engineers, AWS cloud is 32% followed by Azure, followed by Google. And there are a bunch of other clouds lying out there, right? And that is in 2023. And if we move one year forward in 2024, this demand has further increased. AWS is the most demanding skill today in the market in terms of cloud infrastructure. And hence, we built this course using cloud, AWS cloud as our main tech stack, right? Okay, I'll give you an example of real world cloud that everyone has used for sure in their day-to-day -day life. So I believe everyone has used Google Drive one way or the other, another, right? So Google Drive is one of the very early cloud services that we have started using in our day-to-day -day life, right? So how cloud, how Google Drive works. So to get, you know, going with Google Drive, what you need? You need a working internet connection and you need user ID and password. So with, with this information, you can upload your 
confidential information and you can access this information from any part of the world right through any particular device no restriction what what you need is just a working internet and user id and password and you can easily secure all your information in the cloud and you can access this information maybe one year later five year later 10 year later right even way beyond that and this will be there in the cloud itself and it will be safely placed over there right that's the basic first use case of cloud we started using back 10 15 years back itself right and since then cloud has grown many folds there is no end end to it right industry have started using cloud itself okay having said that let's go further into aws cloud computing what exactly aws cloud computing is right so to understand aws cloud computing i'm going to start with a story so let's say you are um uh, manager of a company right and you want to run a, a data analysis on a large amount of data let's say the size of the data is one terabyte or say one billion records you want to run a quick analysis on that data right so to run analysis you need compute power meaning you need servers to run this analysis why because whenever you do anything you need compute for example if you are opening zoom right so this zoom application is running on your computer it's utilizing your ram and memory so meaning some compute is involved similarly to run a large scale analysis we need gpu and cpu right to do this analysis it back in uh, 90 90 2000 right what happens for industries to run these kind of analysis or let's say let's take a very simple use case to store data right they need servers right maintain and build server they have to spend a lot of money right one problem with the servers is that they have a lifetime of two three years only right because what servers are at the end of the day they are hard disk so hard disk like has a life shell of two three years so after two three years they need to be replaced so whenever you want to replace a hard disk, you have to copy data from old hard disk to another, right? And then you have to dispose them off. Secondly, these servers used to get heats up quickly. So you need to manage the cooling system for these servers as well, right? Thirdly, you need a full fleet of network engineers or engineers who, who is going to manage these servers, right? There are upgrades needs to happen. There are security patching needs to happen. So you need a fleet of engineers who are going who is going to manage all of these servers and that is used to happen few years back for companies who were using their own servers so there's a lot of challenging managing the server now imagine you know your business your ceo is saying hey we need to do perform a quick analysis and we need to process one terabyte of data and you know we need to generate this report within three months you don't have this kind of compute capability so what you have to do you have to go buy in the market servers new servers you have to set them up within your organization and then you have to run the analysis right imagine you are a data scientist or data engineer you have no clue how to manage these servers so you have to hire a team manage these servers right and you have to spend a lot of money in buying these servers for sure and let's say after six months the ceo realized that hey this analysis is not going to you know work for us we need to you know scrap this idea so what happened then you're going to be there with those heavy servers right there is no use of it now right maybe you can sell them off again in the market but it just waste of a lot of money so this problem has been realized by aws right and they came up with this idea saying that hey if you are a company and if you want to run some analysis if you want to store some data you need need to buy the server anymore come to us we will give you an account we will create account for you and you can store your data in our servers, right? We will make sure your data is safe. Then company will say, hey, why we, we will trust you, right? How we will we access the data? Then they say, okay, you will be given your own personal account with credentials. So nobody can access your data if they are available in our server. Second thing, the best thing is you need not to pay any single money extra for the time you are not using the server. If you are using the server for, let's say, 28 days only, only pay for that money, no extra money you need to pay, right? If you are done with your work in 29th day, pay for that amount only and, you know, go away. 
we we are not going to charge any single penny after that so company becomes really excited saying that yes that's a very good solution right uh, why spend more money on buying servers managing the servers you know and employ a team of engineers was going to manage all of this let's directly use aws cloud only and we get the work done over there once our work is done we will just you know close the account over there or you know close that service and we will pay for that money only right so that's what company did and that's how aws cloud computing came in the market and it become a real hit right just to link this with a basic simple story right let's imagine you are planning a trip uh, to a foreign country for one month right and uh, your plan is to travel that country on a car right because you want to you know explore that country fully so there are two options one option is you go over there buy a car right manage the insurance road tax license so on and so forth use the car over there and once you are coming back to your own country you cannot take that car anymore back right there is no option of taking that car back to your home own country you have to leave the car over there only option number 2 is you can go over there rent a new car right use that car and pay for 30 days only and all the licensing costs road tax insurance and all is the responsibility of the renting company you need not to pay anything so guys tell me in your opinion which option would you think is a be better option for you you can unmute yourself and answer i see a few chats yeah option 2 rental company right so it's it's very obvious right definitely you want to rent it out by pay extra money right same concept apply in case of cloud computing as well organizations wants to use servers they wants to use compute right and to do that they are just going to aws rent that space out for certain amount of days and they just pay for that day only or that time only right so that was aws cloud computing is all about and now how aws cloud computing is linked to data engineering right so in data engineering we all know we need lot of space to save data we need lot of memory to process right so all of this is provided to us by aws cloud itself so that's why data engineering has a very close connection with aws and that we are going to learn in deep when we move along in our course how we utilize aws cloud to perform lot of data engineering per se right i have a very basic demo already planned today to show the power of aws cloud to show some basic data engineering but this will be very deeply explained in our sessions going forwards okay having said that i'll uh, quickly move on right so i'll quickly come to the topics that this course is going to cover right so if you see these are the major topics that we are going to cover so we we are going to cover sql and python we are going to cover spark big data py spark how how we process large scale data all of these frameworks we are going to cover we are going to cover major aws services that we as a data engineer uses for example s3 lambda kinesis redshift aws glue aws crawler right uh, athena apart from that we have other topics like apache airflow which is an orchestration tool snowflake which is very popular these days for data warehousing solution not only that we are going to discuss what other different strategies to model our data as a data engineer right how we build data warehouses how we design the schemas of our data for example are we going to build a star schema or are we going to build a snowflake schema what kind of schema we are going to build all of this is covered in our courses right not only that every session is fully hands on packed so one thing i can guarantee you for sure is there will be minimal theory and maximum practice on the fly as well second thing we cover a lot of interview aspect as well meaning whenever we discuss a topic we discuss from the interview perspective as well meaning when you go in an interview what all questions can be asked to you by the interviewer so that you are well prepped in that area as well 
thirdly what we make sure that you have industry exposure to these topic meaning not only some basic idea basic hands on you should be having the proper industry exposure so that when you actually start working in a real project you won't be feeling okay i have read all of this but nothing is getting used here here all of the things are different that should not be the scenario hence we make sure that you got industry exposure to all of, all of these topics like how we use these services in real world so that we make sure that after that we have lot of real projects planned that are out there in public definitely we cannot use real company projects because it will lead to ip rights issues but what we use we use aws provided case studies aws provided projects hands on projects in to for data engineering we have planned this as well right so i'll quickly show a glance of what all different services that we have in scope So if I show you a very high level of what all services we have in scope or what all tools we have in scope. So we are going to cover data bricks for big data. We are going to use Airflow to automate our workflow to build detail pipelines, right? PySpark, Snowflake, and definitely AWS and all the big data uh, concepts, right? So all of this will be covered as part of our sessions right i'll see if there is something in the chat yeah so we are going to study snowflake in depth so whatever is required for a data engineer we are going to cover from snowflake perspective as well abhishek okay okay so that's a very basic uh about what we are going to cover in in details right you can contact ganesh to understand more on these topics uh okay why we use databricks so we use databricks to process large scale data predominantly when we want to use spark or pyspark as a framework right so that's that's why we use databricks right okay if you have any questions so far guys you can drop in the chat or you can unmute yourself and you can ask if there are no more questions, I'll probably move on to a quick demo that I have planned to show the power of AWS that we can utilize to build data engineering pipelines. Yeah, we do have Glue, definitely, right? Uh, but Databricks has its own benefits that we are going to cover in the session. One quick benefits, I'll right away mention you that Glue is not free you will be paid for using glue. However, if you want to use Databricks, Databricks is uh, free of cost. So if you want to practice PySpark, you can easily practice with Databricks. Glue, you will be getting charged. So that's why uh, people prefer Databricks to practice. Okay. Guys, you can unmute yourself and ask questions. If you have, otherwise I'll move on to the demo. Okay, if there are no question, I'll move on to a very quick demo. I'll quickly talk about what is my flow is, right? so that you got a very basic perspective of what we are going to see today. And you will see that how we have utilized different AWS services to build this demo, right? Let me go down, right? So what I have planned today is a streaming pipeline, a real-time pipeline, wherein we will be getting some data, real-time data, right? I'm going to say real-time data we are going to get. So we are going to process this real-time data through AWS. So the service that I'm going to use is Lambda to process this data. And after I'm done processing, when I say processing, it means ETL, right? ETL is a very common term in data engineering. It stands for extract, transform, and load. Basically, it means we are pulling data from one place and performing some transformation and loading it back to a target. So post this ETL, we will load this data into a target, which is a database for us. And guys, one thing to mention that everything everything will happen in almost real time. Meaning as soon as I 
create some real time data it will be processed and it will be loaded back to database right this will happen in almost uh, real time itself right so to build this i have utilized few aws services right and these services are sqs lambda and to store the data i am using dynamo db Right. So this is the very basic integration that we have to show that in this demo, but in real world, in our projects, the overall services, the pipelines will be way, way, way more complex that we are going to build and learn, right? But this is a very simple short demo that we have planned for today, right? Having said that, let me quickly see if I have all the services ready. So I have SQS ready. I do have the Lambda function ready. Let me check. Yes, this looks fine. Let me also check if I have the Dynamo DB ready or not. Okay, I do have the table ready as well. Okay, I have three records in this table. Now, let me do one thing. Let me quickly create a new record and we will make sure that this record is getting processed and loaded back to the database quickly, right? So, okay. So guys, what is going to happen that you will notice I'm going to send three columns in my data, but it is going to create four column. There is one more column which is going to be added as well, which is called is adult. It basically a flag that's get added on the fly and it checks if the age of the customer is less than 18, then the flag will say false. And if the age is more than 18, then the flag will say true, right? Okay, let me create some dummy data quickly. Let's start with uh, ID, double zero, double one, double two. We can give any ID, that's completely fine. Let's say Peter, Peter. Right, we can give any name. Let's give age as 27. Let's send this message. So this message has been sent. We'll go to our Lambda. We quickly see if our Lambda is able to access this message or not. So we are checking the logs of the Lambda if this message got picked up or not, right? Okay, this message was not picked up by this Lambda and it's a intentional thing I have put because I want to show what all problems that can occur while building a pipeline, right? So this Lambda is using IAM permissions, right? So if I go, I go to permissions, I go to this role. I'll click on add policy. I have provided the permissions. Okay, let's make sure. It reaches now.
okay we see this lambda triggered from here which is what we want to confirm right and if we go back if we run this we should see the record coming in few seconds it ran successfully okay we got the log just now right this time is in utc which means that our lambda was successfully triggered Okay, so there was an error while loading the data because we were missing the permission. That was I mentioned earlier as well, that we were missing a permission and I made it purposefully so that I can show the overall life cycle that what all we deal as a data engineer and that's why the record was not able to load it back in the DB, right? However, if we fix the permission problem, then this will work and we should be able to load the data back into the db itself right so that's the basic overview of different components how they work together similarly i have in the meantime the permissions are getting applied in the back end i have one more demo planned and we can come back to it later which is using databricks right so in, in databricks we are going to process some data right so we are going to answer a few questions from our data so we have sales information, we have customer information available and what we need to answer is, we need to answer that, what is the total sales coming from each customer type, right? So basically we have two types of customer, VIP and regular type of customer. Each customer is performing some items from the store. We need to give out the sales coming from different kind of customer category and we have divided the customer into different category vip and regular so we need to just provide the overall sales coming from these two category and we have few more questions that we are going to answer with our data but i'm going to focus on the question number one and to answer this question we have two types of data one is the sales data coming from store and one is the customer information like what is the type of the customer what is the customer name so on and so forth so we are going to mix this data perform etl and give the final results back right so to do this i am basically utilizing pyspark as a programming language and to run pyspark we are utilizing databricks as our solution right let's wait before this cluster is getting created okay so this cluster is created cool let's run this job this will take a couple of a second for the first thing so let the job run and this will produce our results Okay, the job is running. It is getting the data processed. Let's see. Okay, and that's done, right? We can see that the sales coming from the regular customer is this much and the sales coming from the VIP customer is this much, right? So we have utilized PySpark to process this data. In the same fashion, we can handle large data as well we can handle different use cases as well and in our sessions that we have planned we are going to discuss spark pi spark end to end and to practice this we are going to utilize databricks right i'll just take a quick pause to see if there's any question in your mind
Guys, you can unmute yourself and uh, uh, Abhi, manage. Abhi, any questions from your end? And Abhishek? Madhu? Yeah, Abhi was asking something. Okay. Uh, how can I create pipeline? So we can create pipelines through various methods. Since our course is based on AWS, so we will be creating pipelines using AWS services. For example, Lambda is good for building real-time streaming pipelines. For batch processing, we can use AWS Glue. Other than that, we can build data pipelines and that we are going to build in our course using snowflakes we are going to build pipelines using apache or flow right we are going to build pipelines using emr as well so all of these will be covered as part of our session right let me quickly you know explain a little more what we did okay so we build one pipeline let me know if my screen is visible to you guys Anyone can confirm if you, you can confirm through and unmute yourself. Okay, thanks for the confirmation. So we have built a very basic pipeline here using these AWS services, right? So meaning somebody is producing the real-time data. Let's say this person is producing the real-time data. This data we put in a queue. This is called queue, SQS, right? So need not to worry, guys. Everything will be covered in very detail in our sessions, right? What is Q is, what is Lambda is, what is RhinoMoDB is, how this pipeline is built. Since I have very less time because we are on a Sunday, you already have a lot of plans, right? So I want to quickly squeeze this demo in this short time and hence I have quickly finished it. But when we go in our sessions, all of things, all of these things will be explained in very detail, right? So we, this has captured the real-time data, right? This guy, Lambda, is extracting this data from here, performing some transformation. Basically, you can say ETL on top of this data. And lastly, we are loading this data back to this database and this database is called DynamoDB. So you will be learning all of these things, how we are building these pipelines, right? So I have used in this Lambda a Python code to perform the ETL in the data. I'll quickly show you. So you will be learning how this Lambda function is built. You will be learning how we are writing this Python code. You will be learning the all intricacies of Lambda function, right? Let me quickly show you again, right? The overall process. Let's add some other records. Let's say 2227. Let's add some other name. Let's say we add Abhi, Abhi. Okay. The age, let's say 29. Let's suppose, right? we put this message here it's done we go in the cloud watch we will see the logs okay we see some logs okay we see this log this record get processed if you see this record get processed and the flag is added as well is adult right because the age is 29 we can verify this record in our db as well if you look, we have this record added recently, right? Similarly, I can quickly show one more record. Zero, zero, uh, one, seven, one, seven, right? We can give anything. We can give any ID, John, Peter, right? Let's add this age this time, 17 or 16, under 18, so that we can say the flag is false, okay? I'll send this message. The message has been sent. If I go to this DB, this should be here. If you look, this record is here. It just almost instantaneously, right? We just added the record here a second back and it's, and it's here. And you can see the flag is added as well, false. So I, how this thing happens? This happens through a pipeline that we have built.
ओके आई आई कम टू दिस क्वेश्चन अभी इन इन अ मिनट सो ऑल ऑफ दिस हाउ दिस हैपेंस बिकॉज ऑफ दिस पाइपलाइन दैट वी हैव बिल्ट यूजिंग दीज सर्विस एंड गाइस यू यू बिलीव मी टू बिल्ड दिस पाइपलाइन आई हार्डली टेक 15 मिनट्स बिफोर दिस डेमो आई वाज बिल्डिंग दिस पाइपलाइन आई हार्डली टुक 15 मिनट्स and i i can guarantee you that after we are done with our sessions you will be building these pipelines in almost similar time and fashion right so you can see to process real time data it's so easy we just took like 10 15 minutes and we are able to build this pipeline and we are running right we are processing this data actually right okay any question okay i see one question how we find cloudwatch in home of aws you can search cloudwatch in home of aws right you can search cloudwatch here that's the home you can search here you will find cloudwatch service uh where are cloudwatch elastic container s3 in aws cloud uh so you can search all of these services here that's are available here like all of these services are available here you mean elastic container as ecs so ecs is also available here yeah any questions uh, team on the chat or you can unmute yourself and you can ask like that's the time to ask questions with the uh, spark architecture part of this uh, yes. syllabus yes spark n2 and will be covered as part of this syllabus starting from the basics overview architecture of spark how spark works internally right because when you go in interviews interview typically as the internal working of spark or the architecture right so that we know and we cover this in very detail how spark works internally and in this demo are you going to cover anything of that no considering we have very less time and architecture of spark will take 2 3 days and to cover at least 2 to 3 days to cover so in my previous batches we cover like took almost a week to explain spark architecture and to it so it's it's not just as if i just cover in 5 yeah i mean minutes. you can understand yeah that's what it is okay so in this demo only a pipeline is part of this demo is it yeah yeah considering the limited availability we have for mm -hmm. most of us that's why you can reach out to ganesh and he can help you with a pre uh, session like already a recorded session of our previous batches mm -hmm. right we, we have done more than 20 30 batches on aws data engineering itself so he should be able to help you with the okay yeah session specifically to big data or spark architecture uh abhi uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, i have one question uh like uh, in date like if we take an example of databricks so databricks is uh, already is having the cluster basically yes uh, in build cluster yeah so uh, do we require aws all uh, can we integrate aws with databricks yes also? we can we can we are going to actually in our sessions okay so the question is like databricks itself can have the all the cluster part of thing like yes. you can add kafka and also like why we require aws to process with databricks because it has mm -hmm. its own functionality mm -hmm. okay very good, the... question. very good question mm -hmm. so databricks is a repr built on top of a cloud so that cloud can be aws that cloud can be uh, uh, azure that cloud can be gcp you mentioned a databricks has cluster so who provides cluster to databricks underneath databricks depends on these clouds only either aws either gcp either azure so eventually we need one cloud who is providing the cluster power to it that is point number 1 second second point is uh, what about the storage so typically we use aws s3 as our primary storage why there are multiple reasons to it one easy thing that you can learn is uh, cost so storing data in s3 is the uh, cheapest among all other services available today in the world right so if so if you want to if you are storing data in s3 then you need some processing and that processing comes from databricks so that is one other reason you will be integrating aws with databricks as well oh yeah got it got it 
थैंक यू ओके एनी अदर क्वेश्चंस वी आर ऑलमोस्ट अप ऑफ द आर वी हैव फोर मिनट्स लेफ्ट सो इफ इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन एनी डाउट कमिंग इन योर माइंड इट्स द राइट टाइम टू स्पीक uh so there's a question from abhi uh he says i cannot get top of bar of cloud watch elastic s3 i i couldn't understand uh, abhi this question can you elaborate a bit please hello yeah yeah rishab yeah i'm saying like uh, when you are doing a, a real time project when when you are teaching so like uh, you are taking the demo data or just a large amount of data you are taking to process and doing transformation action or a simple one simple uh, read csv file or uh, read from the kafka you are you will do basically just want to know like uh, the project would be the complex uh, uh, pyspark coding or it would be normal okay so projects will be definitely complex only and the mm -hmm. way we move ahead is we start from basics for example we enable the person to know what is aggregation in spark what is joining strategies in spark right all of this we make sure that you equipped with so that when you go in a complex uh, case study that we are going to discuss you won't be feeling okay what the hell this is we are discussing right what what, what grouping strategies we are using so we start from basic and we excel it to complex side of it as well so that it caters to every student in the batch got it so like sir, uh, oh yeah good yeah please go ahead sir wo cloud watch or elastic container upar top top line mein dikh raha na sir wo kaisa tha sir uh okay just to just for the benefit of everyone uh, abhi is asking uh, elastic container and cloud watch how it visible so if you can go to this uh, search tab you can just simply search for these services and it will be visible to you by any chance if you are using a enterprise account a company account you may not be able to access this because you are not allowed by the company itself that may happen but if you are using a personal account then you should be able to use it there should be a problem sir i thought it was connected so that uh can we take this question offline abhi abhi uh, we can discuss this after we are done with our demo and... oh, okay sir okay. okay okay thank you yeah abhishek is asking prior knowledge of aws is required not necessarily we start from the very beginning so that everyone who joins the course should be able to pick up well for a few people it may felt a bit you know repetitive because you already know basics of aws but we start from beginning so that everyone get on board to the aws itself easily uh rish sir it is uh, elastic container related to open shift container or uh sorry can you repeat that sir wo sir wo elastic container wo open shift container se related hota hai kya elastic container is related to open shift container uh not specifically uh, elastic containers are container services which allows you to package your code in a docker image and run it uh, open containers uh, if you're talking about oci oci is an initiative built by the inventors of docker to allow building docker images but open container i have to read more what exactly you are talking like i need to understand what you are talking about open containers सर इट इज अ कुबरनेटिक्स कंटेनर वो होता है ना सर वो कोर्स में होता है ना कुबरनेटिक्स इज नॉट पार्ट ऑफ अवर कोर्स बिकॉज़ दैट्स नॉट प्रीडोमिनेंटली कम्स अंडर डेटा इंजीनियरिंग दैट्स मोर ऑफ इंफ्रा पार्ट सो वी आर नॉट कवरिंग कुबरनेटिक्स इन आवर कोर्स सो सर सो आई थॉट दैट दैट इज द कंटेनर ऑफ इट इज ओके ओके कैन वी टेक दिस ऑफलाइन अभी यस सर यस शॉर्ट थैंक यू सर हाउ कैन आई कांटेक्ट Uh, you can contact through ganesh he should be able to help you yes sir yes uh, you can ping me abhi i'll like uh, i'll connect with you 
you can ask uh, rishabh this side yeah rishabh yeah i want to ask like uh, the course uh, duration would be how much like how okay much? So, so typically we say uh, 40 to 45 working uh, classes right okay. but it is not hard and fast fix reason because if the pace of the students in the class is faster mm-hmm. then we should be able to compete in before time as well but if we realize the pace is not fast right people are taking time to grasp the topics so we slow down our pace as well so that everyone gets onboarded to the program so that nobody will feel left out so it may go up to 50 days as well or even beyond so I have K course batches where we completed in 30 days and I have batches where it take 50 days as well to finish it. Okay. Uh, and second question, like uh, I will, I'm also working in the data engineering field, uh, but thing is I'm not using AWS. I'm using on-premise cluster basically. Hmm. So I'm using Kafka also, PySpark also, Scala also, but problem is uh, I'm, I'm not getting the flavor of AWS. So I want to, make my project in such a manner that it should go with the AWS, not with the on-premise cluster. Understood. So, it, so it would be helpful for me also, like, because I have the knowledge of data engine, but just a uh, flavor of uh, AWS, I want to add with my current uh, project basically. Okay. This should be able to help you well, Risha, because we uh, uh, link uh, big data and AWS all together in one yeah. package itself. Sir, are we covering uh, DevOps in it? Uh, we are covering also cloud in it. So, uh, are we covering DevOps in it? Uh, uh, not uh, we are not covering uh, the DevOps part. It's a completely data engineering concept. I uh, hope you gone through the content which I've shared. Or you can ping me in WhatsApp. I'll explain everything. Okay, sir. Uh, I see uh, placement assistance is there. So you can talk to Ganesh about that. We never guarantee job, uh, you know, a placement program. We don't make false promises to individuals. That's not our motto, right? Oh, we definitely refer whatever networking is available out there. We help people with that. Resume building, we do that. But we never make false promise that we will gonna you know place you in companies. That's not is our motto. Our motto is to make you eligible so that you can crack the interviews by yourself. And whenever we see any openings out there, we post in the groups so that you are aware of those openings and you can quickly apply. That's one thing I wanna clear it out here for everyone. Right. So please do not join this course with the fact that after completing this course, we are going to place you in a company. That's not going to work for sure. Sir at, the end of, sir, at the end of course, are you covering some projects which could help our resume? Yes, yes, that's that's definitely covered. So we are covering at least two uh, projects, at least two. And I'm going to give you more projects so that you can yourself read on that and, you know, understand more. So the, these projects would be based on uh, PySpark and Databricks, right? These projects will be based on three things. One is data engineering concept as a whole. So one project will be fully based on streaming data, how you're going to handle streaming data. So what all services you are going to use, right? So to handle streaming data, we are going to use AWS services predominantly. One project will be fully based on batch. So for batch, we can fully use AWS as well, as well as for batch, we can use Databricks as well. So I have both flavors available out there. If you want to practice on your Databricks, you can do that. I have a full flavor on AWS itself. Third flavor I have on Snowflake as well for the similar sort of project, right? So that we are going to cover as well so that you are covered from every perspective because in companies, some people are working mainly on Databricks. Some people are mainly working on AWS. Some people are mainly working on Snowflake, right? So we make sure that you are covered from all the angles. Sir, how is data engineering different from data analysis and data science? It's a very basic question. Abhi, you can Google it, right? Hello, Aditya, Ravishi. Uh, so yeah, totally hi. working on AWS cloud. Yeah, we are going to work on AWS cloud. Cloud will be AWS only. Yes. Yeah. It's not so Azure. On the, it's uh, not. So yeah, on that research, which is we are going to learn S3, Lambda, mm-hmm. uh, Glue, Kinesis, all these things, na? 
Yes, all of the services which revolves around data engineering. We already spoke about this in our demo yeah, few months back. I have I I thought that things. Okay, I'm just asking. So in that we are using some APIs also now in Lambda to extract the data from some service some servers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we have to extract some data. We have to extract some data from servers. We are using some Lambda APIs now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, that is my question. Yep. Currently, I'm working in a big. Currently, I'm working as a business, business analyst, so I know these things. I have to know these things only because yep. current currently working on S3 buckets. That's why. Okay. No problem. Yep. This will be definitely covered. Uh, recorded videos, yes, all the sessions will be recorded. So if you are missing something, you're not able to join, you can definitely go back and watch the recordings later. And this will be available to you uh, throughout. Like they are, they are not going to expire. Uh, they're kind of portal you will make, right? In that you will be uploading something. Yes. So mostly, yes, mostly uh, we upload these videos on Google Drive. Okay. And we, we add you over there, right? Since um, we don't want to spend so much money on okay. all these fancy tools because it eventually then costs you more. And Correct. our motto is to give good quality knowledge, not on, you know, invest on a lot of fancy tools. So that's that's our motto. I mean, uh, you will uh, teach, first of all, online. If uh, someone gets missed, we, they can yes. uh, uh, take yes. from the Google Drive. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Right. That's the right and the batches would be a weekend or it should uh, how how you are teaching how uh, it will it'll be weekdays Rishabh. like uh, we can discuss offline uh, okay, I'll, okay. I'll let you know everything about the course, course. Okay, okay fine i think uh, we yeah. mostly start from like uh, from wednesday coming wednesday we can go and start and okay. the timings will be in the mornings morning 7 30 8 30 in the morning morning okay okay got it thank you sir can we create uh, pipelines in azure also uh, yes, you can create pipelines as you are also. Are we have everyday morning classes? Yes, everyday on weekdays. Weekdays, 7.30 to 8.30. Yeah. Okay. But you can discuss more on this with Kanish. Yeah. Sure. We'll discuss every, uh, everything about the course. That's yeah, sure. So, Rishi, any questions? Rishi, Sambit. Sure then, if you don't have any questions, then uh, we can wind up for now. And uh, I'll call you tomorrow one by one. We can discuss everything about the codes of the plan, everything, the timings and everything we can discuss. Okay. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for joining. Thank, Thank you. you sir.